Today at Craze Performance Repair, we are going to do a displacement on demand delete. We are starting with the valve covers off, the intake off because of a previous video link above. Be sure to check out the description below. We are going to go over several different things in the description as well, anything that I may have forgot to mention. Uh, but let's go ahead and get the cylinder head off, find out where the lifter failed, why and how. So let's get this video rolling here. and. Uh, Stay tuned, like, share, subscribe if you end up liking what you see. These spark plug boots, there's a trick for getting these off of here. If you just pull on them, you have a chance of tearing them down at the base. You can try and pull on this, it helps a little bit. But the best thing to do is to make sure they twist first. You'll feel they actually start twisting because they won't return to the same spot. There, I got it. Now, it, it still doesn't come out easy, which sometimes they're extremely tough. You can take a pliers like this and use something as a fulcrum point. You squeeze it and give it a little pry and it comes right out of there and salvages the wire. Now, if you should be taking these manifold bolts off of here, it is very common that they are broken, especially the back one. And in order to get that out of there, uh, you have to weld them. And I'll reference you to another video on how to do that as well right now. Now you can see I am welding in that stud hole. Uh, what I'm doing when I weld in that, that, that stud is I am building up material, I'm heating it up, and if there's any uh, Loctite in there, the Loctite has now released because it's gotten hot. If there's any rust, I have now shocked it with a temperature change. If there's uh, any other reason it's stuck in there, aside from a rolled thread, this will guarantee you getting the stud or broken bolt out of there. When you do this, you weld the nut on. If it's too deep, you'll have to build up a knob on there. Sometimes uh, it helps to shock it with a hammer uh, if it's a really, really stuck one. And sometimes it takes a few tries to get it out. This particular vehicle does not have any of those broken, so I'm not exactly going to be able to show you how that goes. But it's a very, very easy way, as you've seen, to get that out of there. Uh, it works really, really well. Of course, that was out of the vehicle, so it makes it a million times easier. It can be done in the vehicle, though, so just be aware of that. There it is. This O-ring here, a lot of times, you can see all the dirt on there, will make it very hard to get out of there. you got to make sure you loop that up when you put it back in. Now, in reference to these spark plugs here, I want to note that uh, I'm going to keep them in order because these vehicles tend to burn more oil on the displacement on demand spark plug or, or displacement on demand cylinders they tend to burn more oil than the normal running cylinders so we're going to keep them in order and uh, show you the proof of this flame that i am making okay this side as you recall the two and the six are the displacement cylinders and on the other side it's one and seven so we are going to leave these in their correct order and compare them here well there you have it pretty obvious when you actually compare them okay so if you look at these two here they have white on one side of the porcelain but these two in the middle are black all the way around except for this one with just a little bitty spot of white there but this one's quite white on one side and this one's pretty darn white on one side whereas this one's only got a little miniature spot and this one's black all the way around now I gotta get the manifold off the rest of the way Theoretically, there's a very slim chance that I might be able to get these head bolts out without taking a manifold off of the exhaust, but most likely I'll have to at least take one off minimum just so I can do that. Now we also want to take all the rocker arms loose. So we'll break them free with a wrench, and then I'll use a power tool to take them off the rest of the way. OK, 
Okay, I'm laying that there so I can show you something. Now, when you pick these things up, there's a nice rail down here that you can grab and pick up the whole assembly. That way you don't have to lose orientation of anything. Okay, I want you to see something here. If you look at the coloration, you can see these ones are darker than this one. Now that's because of the flow of which the chamber here is cleaned out. So this here means the fresh air is coming in here. And this, this being dirty, it means that this is the, uh, the one going into the intake. So as far as the PCB works, it comes in one side all the way through the crankcase and out the other. That's why one side is dirtier than the other side. Now these push rods, keep them in order at first. Solid reason for that. I'll show you in a second. Okay, so what I'm gonna do as I keep these in order is I'm gonna inspect each one of these ball ends for unusual wear. Now I see a couple are just barely duller than the other, but they're all usable yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the other ones as well. Nothing, okay? Nothing alarming on that side. Aha! And that's exactly why I kept them in that order. There are some that are worn out badly, so I'm going to have a couple new uh, tools to be able to make. So we have these nice shiny guys here, then this one and this one have a nasty groove worn into them, or, or a flat, kind of funny looking spot worn into it. And then these three are in good shape. So two in the middle are junk, and these ones are good, so I have to replace these two and the correlating rockers with them. Yep, they got a funky groove worn into it to match that. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure I replace those. And then these ones are still good. I'll reuse these. Okay, now you see I'm taking these out first. Also, when I take the other bolts out, I'm going to reverse cross torque them for the sake of making sure that I try and keep the heads from warping as much as possible. That way when they get milled, I don't have to mill very much. Okay, so another trick here. Uh, before I pull this head off, before I get the bolts completely loose, I almost forgot to uh, take the time. There's a passage right here for the water pump. And porsage, wow, I almost said that. Anyway, you take a small hose or tube or whatever, like this plastic one here. This is actually a really small fuel line, I believe, for those fuel line kits, if I remember correctly. But you can shove this little guy in there, and you want to try and get it down towards the corner down here and when you do that now you use the other end to go down towards your drain pan and this and you hit them at just the right angle and you can get it to create a draft so it'll pull the antifreeze out so you won't spill all over the place there we go draining into the pan now i just wait for a little bit i'll take the rest of it loose while i'm waiting Okay, I brought you guys over here for obvious reasons, looking down the cylinders here. Uh, I noticed something that uh, gives me a red flag right off the bat. And I was wondering, I mentioned it in part of the audio that I had missed before, but I had mentioned that this guy possibly drove on it for far too long before uh, he decided to have it fixed. And this gives me the evidence that that is the case. So as you can see here, that cylinder is clean. Um, and these ones are filthy. So that tells me that he was driving on it for way too long and damaged the lifter internally. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the lifters out quick. Uh, well, at least the covers here. And I'm going to pull the bad one out first, which is right there. You can see it's sitting way down. Whereas this one's sticking up. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. Well, I guess we'll pull the other one out too while we're at it, obviously. Okay, so here is a good lifter. This is the side that was facing up before. See, this side doesn't have any oil passage. This side does. Uh, the, uh, yeah, it does matter. It does have a groove. I kind of, I forgot. Um, but there is a groove there, so this is a good lifter. This, ooh, is the bad and stuck lifter. I don't know what happened there, but it's definitely got an issue. Ooh. Aha! There's the problem. Wow, that's interesting. It's broken. It is literally broken. 
Here's the part that is stuck. Okay, so this is the, one of the two calls. The other one will bounce across the floor. I'll go find it quick. I want you guys to keep in mind here how clean these parts are. Okay? The reason I'm mentioning that. Get to that in a second. Now keep in mind before I pull this out, I did have to whack on this a lot harder than I was comfortable with. But I really wanted that brass punch to work. So we'll see how much damage was done. So we do have it dinged in a little bit. But it is not affecting the inside of the bore. But it didn't create a, create a raised spot so much. Let's see how it sits in the bore here. Yeah, it's a little tight. It's not completely screwed, you know what I mean? So we'll get this aside. We'll go look at this away from here once. So I don't drop anything in the motor. Okay, so this part is the part that's sunken in and damaged. Probably from giving it a little wacky whack. So there's that thing. Now, let's see if I can get a light in here. I wish I could show that a little bit better here. What I'm trying to show you guys is that that spot that's damaged would not have affected anything because it's it's in a recessed area. I don't know if you can see that or not on camera. The little screen on the back of this camera doesn't do justice for me. Uh, I'm hoping so. But there's that guy. Now, one thing I want you to note is I mentioned the cleanliness. Look at how clean this thing is. Now, there is not any gummed up dirt debris what have you on here okay so keep that in mind people are claiming that it's sludge buildup that does it no it's not it's not sludge buildup i've had it happen to brand new ones before okay well here here's your proof that that little ding does not affect anything you can see it going past there with, it, with no problems at all so it sticks when it gets down past that though like way past that down at the bottom. Oh yeah, there's where the problem is. Okay. Oh, I wish I could show you. Uh, I'll come up with something to find a way to show you guys. But here's what's happening. So these little guys here. Where is, oh, here's the side. This side sits on the inside of that lifter. So it goes like this. Okay. And this side. Okay, is the side that rubs against the inside of this bore. Okay, and it sits in that groove area. And when there's oil pressure, it pushes these down and allows them to release. So it lets them get pushed into here. So it pushes into there, and then these things come up. The problem is, these things aren't even what's catching, is what I'm finding out now. I thought it was those the whole time, but it's actually the bottom of the bore. It squeezes the bore that this has to go into down tighter on this. So when you put this in here, now, see how I got the gap here? That's because it's where that bore is. So I can't even push it all the way in. If I do, now it's stuck, okay? I can't even, ugh. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and push this on pretty tight, okay? Now you can see it's, it's tight, it's not moving nowhere. When we're hitting it with the hammer, we're just releasing the tension from that squeezed area. Okay, I'm sure this will work. There it goes. Fell out. So we're just releasing by by flexing this or vibrating this, we're releasing that area there. And once it's released, if it never collapsed because the DOD is never applied, it will never get stuck again if you don't let it collapse. But if you let it collapse, the moment you let it collapse, it will be stuck again. That brings us to the end of this video. I finished taking off the cylinder head on the next video. The cylinder heads will be off. We will be continuing this project. And uh, so make sure you stay tuned for that. Hit the notification bell so that you can know when that episode comes out. If you are watching this after that episode has come out, it will pop up in the corner here. And there is a bonus video for those who actually made it through down in this corner for the lights that I have recently installed in my garage, and I'll put a best for viewer in the other corner here. Thanks for watching Craze Performance Repairs YouTube channel.